Admit it, you sing along. You're in your office going, nerds! That's what it is. It's Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites like Bring a Trailer, P Car Market, and Cars in Bids. My name is John Polnick. We are recording this show from the Las Vegas Container Park. Yeah. In beautiful downtown Las Vegas. My partner, Michael Deeb, is not here. He is in the San Francisco's. But I'm with you in spirit. That's right. Rocking the Good Wolf hat. Our friends yep. at the Good Wolf, if you haven't been to the arts. Proper history, snapback. Yeah, check out the Good Wolf. Hey, have you ever been to Deos? Uh, you know, if you if you dig that kind of Luft cult vibe, you got to check out the Good Wolf in the Arts District here in Las Vegas. Go see our friends down there. They are good. They're so nice. What are their first names? Peeps. They're a really uh, sweet couple. Lisa and Sean at the Good Thank Wolf. Thank you, Lisa and Sean. I love those guys. They are the most hospitable shopkeepers in Vegas. They are. So go check them out and get some cool stuff and see the whole downtown vibe. Downtown uh, and the Arts District Cars in Las Vegas is where it's Cars at. Yeah. Cars yeah. and Cars and Cafe. I had a Freudian, I had a Bindler and Freudian slip. Yeah. You can see them because they are the backdrop for, or the, the premise host of Cars und Cafe, the last Sunday of every month. A really good friend of mine throws that show, JP. You should check it out. I think you'd like those guys. Probably not, except the, the guy who runs that show is a total D. That's me. Uh, anyways. <laughs> he's, a, he's a parking Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, what do we do on the show? We, we dig through all these automotive enthusiast auction sites. Uh, we find the most interesting car. We talk about that car. We tell you all about it, why it's interesting. We make a prediction as to what we think that car will or will not sell for on its respective auction. Uh, and then at the end of the episode, we show you what happened. You will see at the end of this episode, you will time travel uh, to the auction's <laughs> end, and you will see how much yeah. it sold for right here. So play along if you want. Uh, uh, give us some comments below. Tell us what you think the most interesting car is on maybe a future auction that's coming up. Maybe we will feature that car in an episode of Bid Nerds. Uh, but right now, we're going to get right to today's most interesting car. But before we do that, make sure you hit the subscribe, like, and notification button. You know, tell a friend about Bid Nerds. Here we go. What's the most interesting car of the day? Sure. Pretty darn interesting, if Woo, I do say so. Look, look at that. that. That's boy. hot. Yeah. What, oh, are we, what are we right. talking about here, Michael Deep? All right. So we're going to go back and visit Doug DeMille on Cars and Bids. Um, offered out of uh, Miami, Florida, is this 1989 Porsche 911 Turbo Coupe. Uh, the 1989 of the 911 Turbo is significant because the gearbox is different than all the years that preceded it. In the final year of the G-Body, Porsche decided to employ the uh, five-speed. The Who makes it? Getrag, right? The five-speed Getrag... Uh, uh, gearbox, the G50 gearbox. Uh, and it really does make a big difference in how this car drives and what it's like to live with this car on the day to day. All the previous versions of the 911 or 930 Turbo or the Turbo Carrera all used a four speed that had an obscenely long, tall first gear, uh, 45, 50 miles an hour in first gear. Um, and second and third were not spaced that close together because the I don't know, just the way the gearbox is built. The five speed makes driving this car a lot easier and a lot simpler to live with. And then of course, it's a lot more fun when you really decide to get on it. This car is uh, in Grand Prix white with uh, black seats and it's got a few modifications. JP, the car shows just 69,000 miles, but one of the owners decided to really go for it with this car. And they changed the turbo to a K27 turbocharger matched with an aftermarket intercooler and a modified airbox. The car also uses an aftermarket exhaust system, which has two outlets instead of the standard one-sided outlet. So it's got a dual exhaust. There's a few other things like an amplifier and an Alpine head unit. It looks like it's got a big, thick Momo steering wheel on there. And of course, they, it's Miami, so they tinted the windows. The thing that rubs me the wrong way uh, is that when I see all these go fast parts, but nobody addressed the suspension on this car, or put stickier tires on it. To me, this is just the guy that wants to show off while he's driving on the freeway 
and he put you know another hundred horsepower in the motor with all the turbo and intercoolers and stuff like that but i and i think you'd agree with me i love to drive these cars and while it's really cool to make the motor more power um where i think you really unlock the potential of these cars is when you spend a little bit of money on the suspension and this guy didn't do it so to me this car screams poser but that would not prevent me from chasing this car. my was fair um and the colorway is really cool and 89s are super rare because it was the only year that you could get a 911 turbo with a five-speed manual before they changed it to the 964 generation of the car. So it is interesting to note, John, that this car has spent uh, several years in Miami. It didn't just land in Miami. It's been there for a while. Um, you and I are not fans of going deep into Florida to find our used cars, especially one that's lived there for a while. So it wouldn't surprise me if there was a lot of moisture in the cabin of this car because it's so nasty and wet and sticky down there. Um, but would you forego all of those normal red flags because – uh, a reasonable mile 89 coupe in white is hard to come by. Uh, I would say yes. I don't know if that buyer is going to notice that car on Doug DeMiro's site. I think this car would have been better served on Bring a Trailer. Um, but Bring a Trailer comes with it. Uh, a lot of vetting and a lot of uh, commenting and made this uh, or didn't want to go through all that, especially when you modify the car. I would uh, venture guess that this car will not pass smog in some of the states in the lower 40, uh, especially California, where they put a, a hose in the tail pipe, an aftermarket turbo and all that. There's no way this car would be street legal in California. I'm telling you right now. So, uh, JP, uh, a lot to like here, but a few things to be concerned about. What's your take on this 89 turbo unicorn, but unfortunately modified to the point where You'd almost want somebody to look at that motor before you bought it, and uh, and it's deep in Miami, uh, deep down in Florida, where you and I don't want to drive the cars out of. What do you think? What's your what's your take? Yay or nay? Look at the way that steering wheel is shaking, man. There's something's going on, um, <laughs> you know. And I also, anytime, anytime we see a car in one of these test drive videos where the jerk, you're a jerk. <laughs> Whoever's driving, look at this. he's got his hand <laughs> underneath the left side of the steering wheel, and he's yeah. he, look at it. And his hand is look. Th th I I wouldn't touch this car. I would yeah. not touch this car. Um, it may have been a great car, but the fact that a D bag like this has had <laughs> a hold of it for any amount of time just makes me yeah. Uh, they got the paper down there. I mean, I get that they're trying to keep it clean, but at least for the test drive video, don't get the paper under your clutch. But I just. Oh, this video is just <laughs> J JP, This is like my out, fingers on a chalkboard. This if, idiot if, that is driving you, this car. If you fly down to Miami and spend the night down there before you drive the car home, this guy will take you to uh, a nightclub in South Beach and get you bottle service, man. Come yeah. on. It's so cool. Bro, bro Chachi. we got a white Porsche, bro. Like, now he's got his hand at the top of the wheel. He's all like growing out. Um, I hate, uh, yeah, this, I hate this seller. I hate this seller. You suck, whoever you are. And it, it doesn't surprise me that they chose cars and bids because uh, yeah. they're stupid. Um, the car looks beautiful. It really does. But yeah, you can smell the inside of this car. The Miami yeah. is just sticky all over it. Uh, stay away from a modded turbo. Um, 911 right. air cooled car. Red flags. I mean, yeah. Red flags. I mean, mod, look, turbo 911s are awesome, and modded ones are awesome too. But you kind of have to know. Look, you have to know what you're doing when you're modding one of these. Um, and I wouldn't recommend taking someone else's modded turbo project when it comes to this. Yeah. You're just asking for a nightmare here. Turbos yeah, this, are problematic anyway. You start adding whiz bang gizmos in there, and I mean, ugh, God. Yeah, the, it it's possible. I'm not saying yeah. this car is, but it's possible a car like this could be a grenade. You don't know who did it. You don't know what they yeah. turned the boost up to. Uh, you'd really want to do your homework, and that's difficult to do when the car closes in seven days on an auction site. So yeah. while this car uh, could be fool's gold, you know, all that glitters might not be gold, and so yeah. uh, th th this could be a problem. I love the fact that it's uh, a sub hundred thousand mile uh, eighty nine coupe. Uh, I don't love that he's changed all parts uh, and, and that this car 
not only wouldn't pass log, you wouldn't trust it to drive at home. Well, you wouldn't trust it to drive at home. What are you doing buying it sight unseen? So uh, I thought this was very interesting. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be tempted by this car, uh, but I think a smart or prudent buyer would avoid it. I agree with my partner here. Uh, I, I would stay away from this car. Uh, and, and it's weird that it's on uh, cars and bids. Uh, certainly easy to get the car up there, but um, the right buyer for this car is probably not there. I actually think this car would do well on P car market, Sean. I just think he'd get 30% more money on the final bid. I don't want to say it would sell. I just think he'd get more money for this car on P car market, which is just irony that he chose Doug Miro over Oyster Bay. You know what I mean? Uh, boy, that you're absolutely right. This, yeah, P car market. This has <laughs> P car market Club. written all over it. Just like, <laughs> you know, don't shave your chest. Just, uh, get, yeah. <sighs> this car is just. It's so sad what's happened to this thing. I love yeah. modded cars. Look, I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't have a problem with modded cars. Clearly, you know, you know me personally. But for those of you who don't out there, I mean, I, yeah. I, I mod cars, especially air cold yeah. Porsches. I think it's great. But like you said earlier, not look. You got to have a holistic approach to this. Just adding go fast parts is so annoying, especially with turbos. Uh, not doing the suspension properly just makes you go, Ugh. and you see in the driving oh, video that the front end is shaking all over the place. Uh, is that why he yeah. has his hand down below so you don't see it shaking? I mean, I just something, something smells worse than the uh, driver's seat in this car. Uh, yeah. It's just, this is, but, look, the, the five-speed is cool for turbos. I guess it does make them easier to drive, but I think the four-speed just makes it, makes it more easy to stay in boost, but this car in particular uh, run away people run away what do you what's your bid? what do you think is going to happen with this auction all right jp with four days to go this car closes on friday the 29th at cars and bids out of miami florida our 1989 porsche 911 turbo sitting at seventy-seven thousand seven hundred seventy-seven dollars on you guessed it seven bids um not a lot of action on this car and i imagine the mods have a lot to do with it um, it's really difficult. A stock car um, would be a $180,000 car with these miles and this colorway. Um, but this car, with the mods, uh, the fact that it's in Miami, the car does not show well to us. And uh, we, we look at a lot of them. I think our car is going to fail to sell at just $135,000. And I'm not even sure... I feel good he'll even see 135 grand, but if it only makes 135 grand, for sure it's a failure to sell. This guy, I'm sure, is thinking he's got a 175 to $200,000 car with his most steering wheel and his, and his um, you know, loped out grip on the on the wheel. So anyway, JP, 135 failed to sell. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, 930s and turbo 911s are soft anyway. Um, I think we saw the height of these. Uh, the prices on these quite a while ago. Um, the, the prices of these have been softening for a minute. Now, everyone's talking about price softening on collectible Porsches and cars in general, uh, but I think these the curve on this one's going to be a lot harsher. Um, you know, the low miles mean nothing when you mod the heck out of these things. Um, right. K27s, I had dual K27s on my 996, but I also had coilovers and drop links and, and you know, just everything, all the fuel management system, everything was done. Not just a couple of things thrown in there in a pop-off valve. Um, yeah, this, this, the person who built this car just has dickhead written oh, all over him. Yeah. Uh, I just <laughs> not, a, I'm just, so, this car just makes me mad. I, I don't know. The, the, the car and the seller just don't deserve to be around Porsches, but this is, this is what happens. I Richard. think a lot of, yeah, a lot of people get, they buy stuff like this because they get all excited and they buy from some Rock. sleazy dude like, like this. Harvey. Yeah. Rob by the start of no, he would, and then no. and then try and squeeze more power out of it. Well, he already has one that he's squeezed yeah. a ton of power, and I've seen him blow the engine three times. So uh, you know, clutch. and the clutch, and 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 and. But hey, at least his has suspension now. For the longest time, it didn't. Um, yeah. <sighs> All right. So your number was what one? What did you say? One thirty-five. And I haven't asked you to change my bid in a long time. If I were permitted, I would go mm. under. I don't feel strong about my bid at one thirty-five. But for sure, if it makes it that high, it'll still f to sell. What's your job? Cars and bids. Uh, Air-cooled cars do not belong on cars and bids. Doug Demuro has not been able to sell these 
uh, at all. He just time and time again, he was barely able to sell uh, a 997 GT3, and it frankly didn't sell. <laughs> they somehow sold it after the fact, which we still <laughs> yeah. are all scratching our head, going, "Huh, how'd you do that?" <laughs> um, so I think uh, I think Demiro is desperate to be able to play in this sandbox, uh, and yep. he's just hanging on by you know dear life. Uh, one thing that we see on this platform that we almost never see on any of the other ones are stall outs the day before. Uh, or even longer, you know, like sometimes you'll see the last bid the day before the auction closes, where all the other auctions, all the action happens in the last five minutes, and then, you know, the auctions will be extended. Sometimes on cars and bids, someone will bid, and then that's it. It's just crickets till it winds up closing. Uh, and I yeah. think this is going to be the case. I don't think this car breaks 100 but I will say really? $100,000, yeah. because I think it'll stall all out. Right. Like, I think it'll just stall hey, out. I think it's just people will forget I, about it. It's not the right place. And it's I, a bad I love... I love saying you're nuts, but that 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 scenario that you just described is entirely possible with this particular lot. So we'll see, we'll see in a, f a few seconds here. So yeah, as much out. as as much as I dislike the seller of this car, and I've never met them. I don't know. Maybe they're great, but you know, they're the way they drive a car. Just <laughs> the makes nicest man in the world. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but look, I I hate the way this car has been presented. Uh, I don't like what's been done to this car. I don't like that it's in Florida. There's a lot of things not to like here. Um, but I'm not saying the car's not worth more than a hundred. Uh, you know, the car yeah. is absolutely worth 130, 150 grand. Um, but yeah. I just don't think it's going to happen when you combine <laughs> this platform, which isn't that bad. I mean, cars and bids and Doug Demiro, he's awesome, right? Um, but uh, but the combination of a platform that does not historically do well with air cooled cars. Uh, particularly Porsches, and then on top of that, an absolutely atrocious ad just is just a recipe for yeah. not disaster, but a recipe for nothing. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's a recipe for paste. You know, it's not this something be, this, you want to eat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but like uh, like my partner time. said, we will see uh, yeah. after you hit There's the subscribe, time. like, and notification button. Uh, there, you will There's know. an ask for RCGP, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see if there's one for this one. There's already asses in this seat, but uh... <laughs> oh, we're going to hell. Okay, guys, I want to tell you about Vegas Auto Fest. The drivers are coming. This is one of our big sponsors. It's the biggest car show of the year in Las Vegas. It's one of the coolest car shows you can possibly experience anywhere. If you haven't made plans to be part of Vegas Auto Fest on September 17th, then do it now. Go to VegasAutoFest.com and register your car. You think you're a car enthusiast? Doesn't matter where you live, plan a trip to Vegas, on September 17th and come out and see this show. It's like Monterey Car Week all in a day. Have you ever been to the Quail? Have you ever been to Works Reunion? Have you ever been to Amelia Island? All those car shows are amazing and great. Have you been to Luftkult? Sure, but Vegas Auto Fest is something special. Make a plan for September 17th. We'll see you in Vegas. And okay, guys, we are back. Man, um, there were a lot of things about this particular auction that, uh, you know, I think the, the, the owner of this car, of this 89, uh, you know, turbo is an idiot. And boy, <laughs> did he <laughs> prove us correct. What a yep. freaking moron. Before we get to that and why he's such a dip D, um, <laughs> Go ahead and hit the subscribe, like, and notification button. Uh, you know, it's it's rare that the bid nerds get, like, I mean, we see some dumb-ish <laughs> on auctions, but this idiot, holy crap. And these guys are a car dealer, right? This seller was a car dealership? Ah, yeah, it's had a dealership, man. Oh, my yeah. God. I am just shocked by the results of this. What happened with this, Michael D? JP, so you know, again, we're always looking at the car. <laughs> my my colleague, my colleague just had a little uh, mechanical failure there with his arms, his camera. But anyways, I will narrate for now. Um, we're always considering the car, the market, and the platform when we when we review one of these auctions, uh, and that's what makes it so interesting because all of them play a factor in the result. So we're looking at cars and bids, which historically hasn't been a great place to sell 
classic sports cars. Cars and Bids is a great place for your just out of warranty, lease return luxury car, uh, your Audis, your Mercedes and Porsches. So, uh, or I should say um, Audis, Mercedes and BMWs. On Cars and Bids, this 89 Turbo, which is a special car, has been modified to the hilt, aftermarket turbos and intercoolers and things that may not pass smog in all of the lower 48. Uh, the car does have a few miles on it, but it's reasonable at about 69,000. The car is in Miami, Florida. I thought the car would bring $135,000 and fail to sell at that number. JP is um, much more barren on this car than $100,000. Two cars and bids, Doug DeMiro's credit, this car on 22 bids was bid to $151,000 where it failed to sell. And I think that, yeah, I think that this car, the reserve, I'm guessing is like way, way unreasonable. This guy thinks he owns a $200,000 car and he does not. That's just not what this car is. It's too modified. It's too beat to hell. Um, it's too bad. Uh, 150000 should have brought this car home and it did not. Uh, the car remains for sale. Um, interesting, JP, you notice that now a week later, um, they still haven't sold the car. Uh, so they have not, you know, Doug DeMiro, if they're making phone calls and calling the underbidders, they, whatever this uh, consigner's number was, is so unreasonable, they couldn't even make a post hammer deal on this car. Uh, and the car remains for sale um, with the uh, auto source group in Miami, Florida. So it'd be interesting. Maybe we should log on and see what they've got it listed for if, if they list their prices at all. But uh, 150 grand, this car should have rolled. It didn't. That's a mistake. Uh, this seller basically hit the lotto um the fact that they i mean i'm I, i'm just beside myself by how stupid this guy is i mean picking this platform was a dumb move in the first place but i don't think it would have brought much more on bat or p car market um i mean and and look there were comments in uh, in the thread below the sale from cars and bids talking about how they were reaching out to the high bidders and trying to make a deal after the fact. So kudos to Doug DeMiro and his team for trying to make it happen. Uh, but this, I mean, <laughs> look, JP, so I scrolled down to go with you on this. Uh, yeah. Somebody said they this car previously listed for two thousand dollars, which is just what I guess. Yeah. Somebody else wrote. Somebody else wrote one hundred and fifty one thousand dollars and no sale. And he says smoking some good stuff. <laughs> so I, I think the consensus is that you and I are in the right wheelhouse, and the consigner is not. And that's just you know he's going to have if the, if he thinks he's waiting, holding out for two hundred grand, he might be holding on to it for ten more years. Yeah, I mean, th there may have been a moment where a car like this could have brought that much money, maybe on a different platform. Again, I, I can't knock Doug on this one. Uh, the bids came. I mean, you saw where, yeah. you know, you and I were bidding. But, you know, I was bidding low because of the platform. I, I You know, when right. I said 99000 I didn't think that uh, the car is worth 99000 It's definitely worth more. Um, but I just thought that this platform is not the place to sell something like that. But... The buyers were there and they were like waving yep. their money in this guy's face. And he just, yeah. oh my gosh, what a moron. And look, could this car have brought more money on a different platform? Uh, if not. It, not with the same ad, not with the same stupid video of the jerk driving it like an idiot and seeing the wheel shaking and all that stuff. I mean, Th guys, this car this needs to be put. This car needs to be put back to stock with yeah. under 100,000 miles and an 89 with the five speed G50. This car is worth investing. It, look, it costs this guy $15,000 to put it back to stock. He might get twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 more money for the car. So yeah. that's what needs to happen. He didn't do that part of the sale. He thought he was going to find buyer. I, or, I don't know. I mean, did he really think so? on cars and bids? It's not the platform for that car. P car would have been a better choice. Um, and still at 150 grand, no sale. They are smoking even some good stuff even down there P car would be like yeah no this is too slimy for P car even I mean I would not buy anything <laughs> from this dealership what is what is the name of this stupid dealership Auto Source uh, Group LLC yep. let's remember yep. that name in the future if we see a car come up from them run the f away this is <laughs> this is an example of how not to do it uh, you guys at Auto Source Group are idiots um, you're just dumb uh, there it is sorry here we guys. Go. Uh, all right. Well, there it is, the guys. How to how to fail 
on the uh, with one of the most interesting cars of the day. And see, that's the thing. I mean, this this car was more interesting. This auction was more interesting than just the car. Uh, and the results were certainly uh, went along with that. So anyways, all right, guys, what do you think this car should have uh, gone for? Do you think it was the platform? Do you think it was the seller? Why did this car fail to sell on cars and bids? We'd love to hear your theories in the comments below. So please do that right after you hit the subscribe, like, and notification notification buttons so you can be aware of the most recent most freshest nerds available every day on the youtube machine thanks for joining us deep anything else you wanted to say before we get out of here not about that yeah we are done with these idiots but you're not done with these idiots. get those nerds